So let's just pick up where we left off, page 577. We were starting with chloroquine and hydrochloroquine, which has been in the news a lot lately because of COVID-19. Let's get into some specifics about it, right? Originally, both of these drugs, chloroquine, hydrochloroquine, these are drugs for plasmodium, for malaria, right? Prototype drug chloroquine over on page 578. So look at how we have therapeutic class. This is an anti-malarial drug. See that? So look, do you see the word plasmodium right there under actions and uses? That's the main thing you need to remember what this drug is for. You see that? Uh, the other drug is the hydrochloroquine, but this is on a different page. This is on page 838. Away we go. 838. 838. That's way back there. 838. 835, so 838, this is, this is a chapter for drugs that are of the integumentary system. This is a chapter specifically for drugs for the bones and joint disorders. So why would hydrochloroquine be here in this chapter that has to do for drugs for bone and joint disorders? So bone, bone and joint disorders tend to be inflammatory responses or autoimmune responses that then tend to be the issue. So if we look for the prototype drug box, page 838, hydrochloroquine, anti-rheumatic drug, but it is also an anti-malarial. So it does have some effect on inflammation. This is why it was considered that it might be a good drug for treating COVID-19 uh, symptoms because they discovered that, remember how we, we talked about how viruses are very specific to what they infect? They have a very specific host and a very specific cell within the host. They're beginning to discover that it looks like COVID-19 affects blood vessels. And that blood vessel inflammation, hydrochloroquine was believed to have some effect on there. The problem is with all of the side effects that occur with it. So bad that they stopped doing the clinical trials altogether. Altogether. So look at this, hydrochloroquine. Originally, what does it say? It is an um, older drug prescribed for rheumatoid arthritis and for lupus erythematosus in patients who have not responded well to other anti-inflammatory drugs. So it has an anti-inflammatory property, right? I would rather go with steroids or whatever. This drug is also used for the treatment of malaria. However, chloroquine as opposed to hydrochloroquine is uh, most effective for, for malaria in itself. Uh, your, my concern with this drug is, look, administration alerts, don't take it with milk, we already knew that, take it at the same time each day, adverse effects, anorexia, GI disturbance, loss of hair, that's the first, loss of hair, headaches, mood and mental changes, so behavioral as well, possible ocular effects, blurred vision, photophobia, phobia, Diminished ability to read, blackout areas in the visual field, and with prolonged therapy, some of these retinal changes are irreversible. This is why. The side effects versus the, the benefits, yikes. They'll save your life from COVID-19, but now you're blind. So, no. The drug that is showing better proof, they've, they've completely stopped this. The only person that, the only people that are talking about hydrochloroquine still for, for uh, um, COVID-19 are those that are more involved for political reasons. Science, this is not the drug for this. The drug is remdesivir. Remdesivir is an antiviral. It is not even in your textbook. Remdesivir is showing to, uh, effects on, hydrochlor on, uh, on COVID-19 better than uh, hydrochloroquine. So this is on its way out altogether. For This is not the use for it. This is for other things. What else is on your list? Let's go back to your original page. We were, let's see. Tetracyclines, chloroquine, acyclovir. Speaking of viral drugs, acyclovir. Acyclovir. Where is acyclovir at? Acyclovir starts on page, it's chapter 37. Acyclovir. Acyclovir is an antiviral. Acyclovir, antiviral. Page 603. Acyclovir. Like that. Antiviral as opposed to antiretroviral. That's later. Antiviral, acyclovir, it is the drug of choice for most viral uh, herpes infections. So look at what it says, approved by the U.S. and Drug Administration back in 1982. First antiviral drug, acyclovir limited for the pharmacotherapy of herpes viruses. That's it. So just the herpes viruses, which is, you got them as bullet points down at the bottom there. Herpes simplex 1, 2, cytomegalovirus, 
herpes zoster, varicella, Epstein-Barr, and then rosella. So the herpes viruses is what a cyclovir is specifically for, not any other type of virus at all. You see that? Look at the last sentence in that whole paragraph. Because of its short half-life, a cyclovir is sometimes administered PO up to five times a day. Look at that. So you can take quite a lot of it because it's very it, it, it comes in and out really quick. So the pharmacokinetics of it is very short. So it takes a lot of effort to throw pills at you to keep you at that serum level in order for it to be effective. So obviously it's going to depend on the comorbidities or the previous health of the individual. Administration alerts when given IV, the drug may be painful. So you got to give it a very slow over one hour. IV over one hour, I believe, is with the your uh, the other book which you should be looking at as well, the, um, what's it called? That ATI drew, orange book. Adverse effects, ne nephrotoxicity, neurotoxicity. Nephro and neuro, nephro and neuro. And a little bit further down, yeah, kidney function is the main thing to remember. And then at the bottom, there's that chicken pox. Don't forget, it's airborne. What else do we have on the list? Mebendazole, mebendazole, mebendazole. I believe that is for worms. Mebendazole. I believe it is an anti helmin Mabendazole, over on page 582. 582, Mabendazole, Veramox. So know that this is an anti helminth drug. If you have to identify it or if you see its name pop up as an option for a particular question, Mabendazole. So just remember, this is anti helminth This is for worms. And don't forget, ringworm is not a worm. And why do we call it a worm? I don't know. Because we just... We're Americans and we like to complicate it, right? So ringworm is not a worm, but a drug that is for worms is this drug, mabendazole, for worms. Hel helminth is another word for worms. Mabendazole. Now metronidazole, metronizazole, metro, metro, like the cops, metro on the previous page. Don't get metro confused with maben mabendazole with metronod metronidazole. Metro, Metro, page five, 580, metro, Metronidazole, Flagyl. Yeah, so this is already for big bugs. Not a bacteria, I'm talking a, an amoeba or something that's got a flagella, like what? Giardius, Trichomoniasis, yikes. Anaerobic bacteria too, but this is for amoebas. This is like for big bugs, not little tiny bacteria I'm talking a full-blown organism that's got a nucleus and all of this other uh, organelles inside of it and it's got a digestive system and it's practically it's got its own little brain so these are big bugs giardias trichomoniasis amoebas so just know that this drug the way I remember it is for STDs and I think the example we gave was like metro like the cops and STDs like prostitutes like metro gets the prostitutes off the street so Metro gets the STDs off the street. <laughs> you need a way to remember it. So that's a good way to remember those two drugs, right? Flagell, that's the other name for it. Next term is ringworm. It's not a worm. So what types of drugs do we get for ringworm? Ringworm is a fungus, antifungals. Not all antifungals end in zole. Be careful, be careful, be careful. That's the only time that the endings work against you a little bit. Levofloxacin. We talked about levofloxacin already. That's levoquin. Because there's, what was the other one? Ciprofloxacin is cipro, drug of choice for anthrax. Levofloxacin, just remember, is also a, uh, a fluoroquinolone. Stay out of the sunlight. Watch out with uh, snapping tendons. So tendonitis and warn the patient. Right? What's the next drug we have? Hydrochloroquine. We already talked about it. All the adverse effects, think blindness, retinal changes black spots in the visual field, loss of ability to, to read, mood, and uh, behavioral issues. Sounds like someone we know who's really pushing hydrochloroquine a lot, right? It's like almost to the T. Plasmodium. Plasmodium and the connection to sickle cell trait. We already talked about that, right? So don't forget that, yeah. So very early stages, that's plasmodium, which turns into malaria. But then malaria, it's passed on into the genes of the great, 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 grandkids. And now you got sickle cell trait. And if two people that have sickle cell trait get together and have four kids, one of the four kids is going to have sickle cell anemia, the actual expression of the silent little gene that's in there. I believe there's blood tests for that too. 
Look at the next term, signs and symptoms of a viral infection versus a bacterial infection versus an allergic reaction. So all three of them are going to have discharge coming out of the nose. Viral and allergic reactions is a watery discharge. Bacterial is going to be thick, green, tenacious. That gunk, that's exudate. This is a sign of an infection, a bacterial infection. Right? The other thing, uh, fevers. Bacterial infection will have a fever, and the viral infection will have a fever. But the allergic reaction may not. Although some people do get a little tiny low-grade heat fever with some allergic reactions, but it shouldn't technically be there. Uh, the allergic reaction and the viral infection might look more similar, but the allergic reaction is going to have more of the itchy, watery eyes and a little bit of the, the airway issue. It might be occurring as well. The viral infection is going to hit you hard and heavy. You went from totally normal this morning to, oh my God, I'm dying by this afternoon. And then it takes about seven to ten, seven days, seven, seven to ten days for it to come in and come out. No cure for viral infections. Treat the symptoms, but there is vaccines you can give for most viral infections, not all. Not only that, bacterial infections, no, that starts out bad and then just gets worse. It starts gradual, gradual, gradually is really bad, and then gradually it lingers. So bacterial infections can be up to three weeks, up to a month, sometimes before you're 100% back to normal. It takes a while. So that's bacterial infection. So be able to differentiate between the three signs and symptoms, what you treat, what you do, what you don't do, yada, yada, yada. Either way, all three of them, push fluids, all three. Water, water, drink water, drink water, liquefy sputum, drink water. Turn, cough, deep breathe, promote, uh, uh, what do you call it, effective airway clearance, all of them, all of them, you know, clear it up, uh, push fluids, nutrition, and get rest, uh, treat the symptoms. Uh, next one, it says goals, patient education, course of treatment for antiviral therapy. So antiviral therapy, it depends. Uh, I think that means more anti-retroviral therapy. Yeah, I think I read it wrong. Goals, patient education, course of treatment for antiretroviral. That's different. That's HIV. That's HIV. That's not herpes. That's HIV. So what do we mean by this? The goals of therapy. What is the goals of therapy of retroviral ther uh, retroviral drugs? That is at page 5. 91, 591 at the bottom of viral load. Uh, antiretroviral therapy does not totally eliminate viruses from the body. The treatment must continue for the lifetime of HIV infected patients. Given the high volume, a little bit further up, where is it? Someone who's got to have the goal. The goal of the two laboratory tests, viral load. Ah, there it is. And that viral load further down. The goal of antiretroviral therapy is to reduce reduce plasma HIV RNA to less than 75 copies. This may take 12 to 24 weeks of medication, but you might be on medication for the rest of your life because there's many different strains. Remember that for some people, it, and for some people, it, it, it takes them down immediately and others, it lingers and then they get it under control. So different strains of HIV and not only that, individual patient factors that influence the course of the, the infection, the way it, it un unveils the um, not the prognosis. Yeah, the prognosis. The prognosis of the condition. What else can we say? Uh, so goals, that's the goals. Patient education, compliance, compliance, compliance. So remember that for antiretrovirals, you're not going to give one drug. You're going to give two, three drugs sometimes. That's that approach known as heart therapy. Page 592. Left-hand side, it starts talking about 592, left-hand side, Towards the bottom, antiretroviral drugs may cause many adverse effects, including nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, rash, lipid abnormalities, hepatotoxicity, neuralgia. Patients always take at least two, at least. Yeah, you see, at least two of these drugs and usually more. I've heard three for the most part, but sometimes four, which often interact with other medications. So you see if you already have, now you're a diabetic and now you have HIV. So that gets really complicated. So to be successful, therapy requires right there, strict patient compliance with a complex regimen. What is this complex regimen known as? Heart therapy right across from it. The goal of heart is to reduce the HIV RNA to the lowest possible level. 
The other one says to 75 copies per, this one says low as possible, even low is so low that you become undetectable. You're never going to go back to HIV negative. Once I HIV positive, you got HIV. Because remember, it's it, it can hide. It's an inanimate object. You see that? So you can just be reduced down to undetectable as opposed to HIV negative. I am HIV negative. No, you just kidding. So you still want to promote safe sex and talking to partners, sex partners about condition and stuff, you know? Being honest with the people that we build relationships and uh, uh, involve, so, uh, involve ourselves with, right? A little bit further. Well, it continues treatment for antiretroviral, and then these are your drugs right here over on page 593. So just stick to the prototypes, the three, because each prototype is in a different pharmacal, uh, um, pharmacologic class. So look at the first one, efavirenz, sestiva. I know them by the brand name, sestiva. So that's your nucleotide. That's the NRT inhibitor. A little bit further down, zivalbudine, which is the retrovir. And then this is the non-inhibitor, right? Turn the page. Look how it says you have the prototype boxes. 594, that's your retrovir. That's your NRTI. Invenzavir, sestiva. N N R T I. You see that? And then the third one I told you to remember was over on page 596. That's lopinovir with rotinovir. So the two in one, look at the class. That's the one I want you to remember. Proteinase inhibitor. So why is it two? Go all the way to the bottom, page 597, because it needs a pharmacokinetic booster. Because the PI drugs are very good for HIV, but they make you sick, really sick. But you got to get the drug in you. So a pharmacokinetic booster. What does pharmacokinetics mean? Get the drug in and out of you faster. In and out, so the booster makes it go quick, quicker, quicker, quicker to get it into you, get the side effects out of the way quicker, and then the drug stays inside of you. So they call it a, a pharmacokinetic booster. Let's read that paragraph. Durumnavir, which is an example of, a, of another PI, recommended drug for initial treatment of H, HIV, but it's the same category, the PIs. Although others in the class will be frequently encountered in clinical practice, the tolerability and the effectiveness of the PIs has an enhanced, is enhanced by combining it with a medication called a pharmacokinetic booster. Like what? Retinovir right under there. Sounds good? So know those right there, basically. Right? Then I have on your review AIDS versus HIV. AIDS is a combination of opportunistic infections. It's acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Syndrome is a condition. See that? So a whole bunch of opportunistic infections at once, that's AIDS. How did you get all of these opportunistic infections? Well, you ran out of T cells. Where did the T cells go? They got eaten up by the virus. That's HIV. So HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, that's the name of the actual virus that will eventually kill your T cells, which eventually causes this syndrome to occur. So AIDS, HIV doesn't kill you, opportunistic infections kill you. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the name of the game is to keep the viral load low so that the T cells stay high so that the opportunistic infections don't develop. That's, that's the name of the game right there. So I got to scroll it down a little bit and see how, what else we got. We're coming down to the end. Heart farm classes, we just talked about that. Pharmacokinetic booster, we just talked about that as well. Different forms of isolation based on modes of transition, transmission, like chickenpox, airborne. I think we drilled that one home. Uh, yeah, so just different forms of transmission. I think what I'm talking about here is immunosuppressed people. Immunosuppressed people who are going to require neutropenic precautions or uh, reverse isolation. So I'm dangerous to the patient because the patient's got no immune system. That's a reverse isolation. You see that? Not he's dangerous to me, like TB. I'm dangerous to him. So neutropenic precautions, neutropenia, which means less of white blood cells. So uh, no children in the room because children have a lot of germs on them. Um, no pets. No potted plants, no fresh fruit, no vegetables. Yeah, everything's got to be very cleanly and clean, clean because they have a high chance of developing an infection. This is a reverse isolation. Uh, droplet, it would be like COVID-19, four feet. Anything within four feet is now going to require a mask. Uh, what else do we have? Tamiflu. Tamiflu is a different one. You need to know the pharmacological class for Tamiflu. 
Tamiflu is at the bottom of 604. Tamiflu is for the, the, the common cold, which changes every year. Because remember, like I said, the, the virus is closer to more. The virus is closer to being a uh, computer program than it is to being a living thing. So this computer program changes every year. Every year. So that's why last year's flu shot won't work for this year. And this year's flu shot won't work for next year. It may. It may. But chances are there's more than one strain. So if you get the flu shot and then you got the flu, way, what's up with that? Because you got a different strain. So sometimes some flu vaccines cover some strain. Some of them don't. That's what you have to be careful with. Uh, that's the whole science of the virology. So in this case, Tamiflu is a medication that you have to give it within 48 hours. It's down at the bottom. 604, left-hand side, last paragraph. The neuroaminidase inhibitors, Tamiflu. Neuroaminidase inhibitor, yeah. Uh, introduced in 1999, active influenza infections. If given within 48 hours, Tamiflu will cut it down instead of a seven-day infection to a five-day infection. So you bought yourself a weekend there. So just know that and know the prototype, the pharmacological class for it. Don't get it confused with the antiretroviral pharmacological classes. Hint, hint. Uh, tell me, testicular cancer, breast cancer. Testicular ca cancer is pediatric. So consider the age group. Remember, it's not an older guy's condition. Testicular cancer is a young person going through puberty. And don't forget, uh, humans don't fully mature until about 23, 24, sometimes 25 frontal lobes. So it might be up into even the early 20s that they might be a risk so for testicular cancer because there is such a thing as the late bloomer. Some boys go through puberty faster than others. Some of them develop very quickly and look like men a lot earlier than they should or than they, they're supposed to. And some of them are little squeaky voices and they don't turn into men until a little bit later. So there is such a thing as the late bloomer as well. While I'm on that subject, you as a nurse, in case nobody ever talks about it, never treat the patient pediatric patient going through puberty based on what they look like. He could have hair on his chest and a full-blown mustache, but he's 15. That brain is only 15 years old. So that's the problem with boys that develop too quickly and look like men too quickly. They get treated like men too quickly when the mind is still that of a, a young boy. Does that make sense? So be careful. That's a lot of pressure that never gets talked about. That's a lot of pressure on a boy who already looks more masculine, and then you're putting the man responsibilities on him when it's still a boy. So treat the patient based on the chronological age, and don't forget the Maslow hierarchy of, uh, not Maslow, uh, Ma not Maslow, uh, Eric Erickson, what developmental stage that they're in, because that's their priorities and where the mind is at, right? Uh, not only that, boys that mature a lot faster tend to end up being divorced more often, and boys that develop slower, late puberty, those tend to have more stable relationships as adults, and that's sad. So plenty to look at there for both uh, and the way we're treating boys and the way we're raising boys and sometimes the pressures and responsibilities that we're putting on them. And then the behaviors we get is because that's an immature response to it. How did I get on this topic? I'm so sorry. So testicular cancer, pediatric condition, my God. Breast cancer, uh, females, estrogen is the main thing. For the testicular cancer, is spikes in testosterone that can cause these tumors. And for females, it's the spikes in estrogen and a family history, obviously, for both of them. Testicular cancer sometimes can come also develop because of uh, repeated blows to the testes during puberty. And for females, uh, it's usually a family history also. Uh, so uh, estrogen. So you're giving medications to suppress estrogen levels. So what kind of medication suppress estrogen? Tamoxifen. Tamoxifen decreases estrogen levels. Or you can give uh, progesterone. Progesterone is usually given for hormonal contraceptives. So, But most hormonal contraceptives are progesterone only or progesterone with a little kiss of estrogen. But progesterone is hormonal contraceptive. So yes, we can give a hormonal contraceptive for Preventing breast cancer because it neutralizes your estrogen level. Right? Uh, yeah, and then um, what else do we have for breast cancer? The breast self exam. Don't forget the sign on the outside, the pew de orange, which means peel of the orange or orange peel skin. Uh, French word pew de orange. P e u. Oh gosh, don't make me spell it. D apostrophe orange. 
uh, Puderange or skin of orange. If you Google it, you'll see some pictures of it. But it's very obvious. Once you get good at detecting it, you're like, oh, that's a tumor right there, definitely. Pulls the moisture from the surface of the skin. And the other one is uh, cyclophosphamide. Let's see where that's at. Cyclophosphamide, that's for cancer. That's for cancer. So let's look at that. Cyclophosphamide. 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 Cyclophosphamide is over on page 619. This is an anti-cancer drug, anti-neoplastic. So look at what it says against a wide variety of cancers, including Hodgkin's lymphoma, my, multiple myelomas, breast cancer right there, and ovarian cancer. That's why we're talking about it. So for once you actually have the cancer already, the tumor, this is where this drug comes into play. So cancer is rapidly proliferating cells faster than they should be. These drugs kill any cells that reproduce very fast. So that includes cancer cells. Unfortunately, that also includes bone marrow. So bone marrow suppression is your biggest concern with these drugs. Uh, hair cells also reproduce very quickly, which is why alopecia is also uh, a lot of times people that are on chemotherapy, they go bald. It's because the medication is technically a poison. It kills, kills any fast reproducing cells. So there is some GI upset because all of the cells in the intestine reproduce fast. So no wonder that a lot of the chemotherapy that is uh, drugs like these have a, a nausea, vomiting, anorexia, malaise. Yeah, you see that? Yeah, they're, they're trying to hold weight. Food down is an issue. And then the little food that they do hold down, the cancer tumors start to consume all of that energy. So down at the bottom, adverse effects for this cyclophosphamide, uh, bone marrow suppression. You should know what that looks like and you should know what to look for. Look at what it says, potentially life-threatening between day 9 to 14 of therapy. Down at the bottom, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, expected. Reversible alopecia. So keep that in mind. The alopecia might be a concern for body image disturbance. And this is where the wigs come into play. Um, I don't know why my mind always goes to Sex and the City, the show and the movies. I grew up when that show was coming out. I learned so much about women from Sex and the City. Uh, but the war where the Samantha gets cancer, loses the hair, and it turns into a whole episode. Anyways, uh, that made me realize body image disturbance and then the whole issue with the removal of breasts. Uh, that really affects the mind on a female. I mean, that is what makes you a woman, you know? And then the hair, the beauty, and the whole bit, it's a big deal. It really is. So uh, I say those are areas where the, the nurse can find ways to find rapport and become part of the solution for the patient's situation. You may not be able to cure the cancer, but you may at least make them feel better about uh, the treatment and the responses that they're going through. So heal the mind. Heal the mind and helps the body, right? A little bit further down. Uh, cyclophosphamide, methotrexate. I think we've talked about this sucker so many times already. We sure have. We don't need to go through that. On page 622, methotrexate. A little bit further down, methoprogesterone, medroxoprogesterone. That's the hormonal contraceptive. That's Depo-Provera. So that's a shot. And that's going to be over in the hormonal contraceptive chapter. That is over on page 795. Medroxyl progesterone hormonal contraceptive, but it can be also used for uh, excessive uterine bleeding and look at also for uh, uh, prevention of breast cancer, suppression of estrogen. Because if progesterone is up, estrogen is low. If estrogen is high, progesterone is low. So boom. So you're forcing a high amount of progesterone to keep the estrogen down. So these females will not have a period. They'll, they'll, they'll go in through amenorrhea, maybe one period a year or no periods at all, which is usually what happens with female athletes. If you think of it. That's, we'll wait until we get to this chapter. For this particular drug in particular, methylprogesterone adverse effects may cause breast tenderness, may cause breakthrough bleeding, and menstrual irregularities. The irregularity I'm talking about is cessation of the period, which is the whole point of birth control to begin with. So Depo-Provera is going to be a shot. I believe it's one every two or three months, and it depends on the dosage. I believe there's one that's even just four times a year. So four shots a year and then no periods throughout the year at all. However, it does not come without its risk. Thrombo, thromboembolism, clots, clots, clots. So this patient smokes, they got to stop smoking. This patient has a history of clotting disorders and a stroke. Oh, no, yeah, cut it out. No, nothing. That's why it says black box warning. Watch out, increased risk right off the bat of stroke, thrombolytic stroke, 
DVT, MI, pulmonary embolism. Signs and symptoms of a pulmonary embolism, difficulty breathing and pink, frothy, foamy sputum. Pulmonary embolism, 90, 80% mortality. My first patient that ever died on me died of a pulmonary embolism. Let me see, contraindications, carcinomas of the breast. So if you already have a breast cancer, then this may not be the drug. However, they might give it to you to prevent breast cancer, you know, to keep estrogen levels low. The next drug is tamoxifen. That's over on, back to where we were at. Or is it on the same page? No, I think it's back on where we were at. Tamoxifen. And I believe that's the last drug we're going to look at. Tamoxifen, tamoxifen. Neoplasm chapter, tamoxifen over on page 627 is your list. Methylprednisone, megase, don't forget that, to stimulate the appetite. Tamoxifen down at the bottom. Look at what it says, tamoxifen. Uh, turn the page, page 529, tamoxifen. Anti-estrogen drug, anti-neoplastic. Black box warning, increases risk of uterine cancer. That's the problem with it. It will decrease the chances of breast cancer, but it just increased the chances of uterine cancer altogether. So that is your... You're doing it entirely other than that simple med math, and I truly mean simple, simple med math. Read your question carefully. What is this question asking me? Is it looking for an amount? Is it looking for the drugs? Is it looking for how much per day? Is it looking for how much per week? So read the questions carefully. You know these answers, right? Um, you know how to do this. You'll, you'll be fine with it. I hope. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Well, there's your videos enjoy watch them watch them over and over and over and over again so that you can really really end up with a good grade those of you that are on the edge this is your opportunity to boost that grade um and then we'll take it from there so thanks for watching don't forget to hit like and subscribe <laughs> and uh we'll see you soon take care guys bye